Let's go straight across to Dr. Surinder Pal, Distinguished Scientist, Associate Director, Program Director, Satellite Navigation Program at ISRO Satellite Center. Appreciate your joining us, Dr. Pal. Just give us a sense of what this means to the scientific community involved with ISRO. Less than 24 hours to go. What does this mean the next 24 hours for someone who's been connected with ISRO over the years? Is this a culmination of a lot of hard work over several years now? So, uh, Rajiv, I'll reply in two parts. One is, as a technologist, uh, I'm quite confident, and I also see that the whatsoever development have been taking place over the last 50 years, the fruits of there are coming up. As far as an Indian is concerned, uh, well, I, I'm quite confident that we will land, and I, I'm quite elated that as an Indian, uh, I mean, uh, when we land there, we leave our imprints you know, our Raj Chinnar, Ashok emblem will be there, the Isro emblem will be there after when the rover rolls down. All the experiments work wonderfully well. And so, uh, the redundancies which have been built uh, in the, inside the software as well as hardware, the simulations, which are extensive simulations have been done in the software and the hardware, mm -hmm. all those is, uh, you know, they give me confidence that we will be successful. Some of the things have been over designed also, you know, like propulsion has been put more this time. The battery capacities have been increased both in the lander, in the propulsion module, also on the rover. The rover has got 10 ampere hour thing. And uh, for 14 days, it will work. I see from the chairman ISRO that we will definitely land even if uh, things are failing. You know, this time analysis has been done based on failure mode analysis, not on success based. Another thing is that uh, we have got four thrusters which are quite uh, powerful, 850 Newton meter, which uh, because thrust can be controlled, what we call it slewing. And even if two works, nothing else works, it will land. That's what the chairman is to say. And I'm quite confident about it. So what you are saying, what you are telling us is that we have learned from the mistakes that might have been made during Chandrayaan 2. And even if something may not work, God forbid, tomorrow, there is enough backup to ensure that there will be a soft landing on the moon. So history in the making. Yes, uh, I must say that not only simply backup, we have got almost triple backup. Now, let me tell you that uh, this is the only mission. Usually, no space technologist work for uh, more than three sigma. This has been, most of the systems have been tested to uh, six sigma. Six sigma means one mistake in one million. So that sort of accuracies are there. Things have been over-designed, uh, both power, propulsion, telemetry, where we have increased the rates from 200 to 500 kilobit, and uh, there are double redundancy in the communication link. Also, if, I mean, the sensors which are there, like you know, laser mm -hmm. uh, Doppler velocity meter, the hazard avoidance, detection and avoidance, camera, then the uh, carbon, uh, uh, la altimeter, laser altimeter, off camera, front camera, mm -hmm. and gyros, which are calibrated just before landing. There's a navigation period of 10 seconds, where all the things will be calibrated in operate manner, absolute manner, and they will be calibrated with the star sensors. So the position accuracy also will be there. Less, now also, this time, the area they have increased, you know, from two, 500 meter by 500 to 2.5 kilometers by mm -hmm. uh, 4 kilometers. When they land it, the algorithm takes care. Total system has been divided into grids of 24 meters by 24 meters. Out of the so many grids, 20 grids are selected. Out of 20 grids, 8 grid points have been selected. And one, no one point is more than 100 meters away. So the lander will hover like in a, a helicopter. And uh, it can go from one place to another place in 100 meters. Just one final question, Doctor. Uh, there could be a plan B, we are told, because of weather conditions. And 27th August is that new date in case things don't work out tomorrow. But from what you are telling me, there is a very minimal chance of using plan B. Am I correct? 6.04 p.m. tomorrow, all going well, should be the landing? Yeah, I am quite confident about this. Now, let us talk about the 27th August. If it is there, then, uh, you know, it, it has got enough propulsion and the margins in the battery and the total power system. 
it can come back. But this time it will be landing on the westward, so that still you get the 14 days uh, 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 I mean sunlight. Mm -hmm. So it's not that if we don't land on 23rd, we will be losing some time. So it is on westward, 14 days will be still available. Okay. And that's a plan B, you know, in a space technology, we always keep a plan B. It's not that we always go by one plan only. Okay, let me leave it there. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Doctor. We'll be tracking this all the way. It's our big story. You can cheer for Chandrayaan. Uh, go on to the India Today website. Find out how you can send your messages to ISRO scientists. Big day ahead.